Hey, Coach. Uh, two quick questions. First, you know, it seemed like. Where it, are you from? Sorry. Yes, uh, identify an, name and affiliation. Sorry, M. Adler from the next. Uh, two quick questions. Just what went into the strategy in terms of how you wanted to defend uh, Caitlin Clark? Um, and then also just wondering, you know, it seemed like you had a long embrace and some kind words for after the game and the handshake line. Just wondering if, if you wanted to share what those were. Well, there's not a whole lot of strategy. You got to guard her. Nobody else seems to be able to guard her. We didn't even guard her last year when we beat them. Um, she's just a generational player, and um, she just makes everybody around her better. That's what the great ones do. I think they had a kid that scored 21 and 18. She had 12 assists. Caitlin Clark's not going to beat you by herself. It's what she does to make those other teammates better that helps her score points and them score points to beat you. Um, what did I say to her? I said, I sure am glad you leaving. <laughs> I said, girl, you something else. Never seen anything like it. Right here and then up here. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV. Uh, were you surprised at all at the pace of that first quarter? Yes. I. Um, and talking to my team, we played to their pace. And um, we ended the first quarter with the lead. No, but no. Back first. I think their pace dictated um, that third quarter. I think it really, it really hit us in the third quarter, that pace. Kim, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. How hobbled or how limited was Angel? And can you talk about the performance that she had despite that injury? Um, I didn't ask anybody, you know, how bad the sprain is. And I, honestly, I'm assuming it's the same ankle that she sprained in the SEC um, tournament. Um, but you're in the heat of the moment. You know, she's playing. Um, trainer never came to see me to give me any details, you know, so I don't know that Angel or I, either one, would ever make an excuse that her being hobbled was why we lost the game. Dan Zekshevsky, Outkick.com. Coach, your team wasn't on the floor during the national anthem. Uh, first part, was that a conscious decision on your part? Second, uh, can you say what the team was doing during that time? Honestly, I don't even know when the anthem was played. We kind of have a routine where we are on the floor, and then they come off at the 12 minute mark. That's when the um, we just, I don't know, and we come in and we do our pregame stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I listen. I, that's nothing intentionally done. Uh, Jacques, do you say WAP TV in Baton Rouge? Uh, Coach, your players had some very passionate and animated comments just now right about there. Angel and treatment and um, criticism and whatnot. Just your thoughts of what you just listened to. Um, I'm going to assume something here now. I'm going to assume they're talking about social media attacks and I don't, I don't see all that. I don't do social media. I thought it was heartwarming. I thought it was um, touching. They are young people that are on social media and that is their teammate and um, it sounded like to me they've been wanting to get that off their chest so I just listened like you guys did. Cool. Reed Darcy with the Advocate in Baton Rouge. Coach, when you look back at this season, what do you think you're going to remember and feel the most? I'm proud. I'm going to feel very proud. Um, I'm going to um, think of the little things that we overcame that um, put us in an elite eight. You're one game away from going back to the final four. And I'm going to eventually think of how did we get here? How did we get here? What did we do as a team and as a staff to get to this moment? 
So basically, I guess what I'm telling you is you learn. You learn. I learn every day as a coach. Um, I look at this stat sheet and I just put a lot of little notes down there and I'll file it away and think about it when the emotion of a loss goes away. Um, we shot the ball, y'all, almost 20 times more than they did. So that's the pace I'm talking about. And then you look at that second and especially the third quarter where we just miss shots. Um, you'll, you'll dissect things like that. And um, yeah, I could probably tell you a bunch of things you'll dissect in X's and O's wise. Um, reverse the ball just a little bit tougher in the moment. Um, depth, I mean, you could, you could just sit and talk all day about the game. Um, only one team finishes the season happy. And boy, we got to do that last year. And somebody will get to do it this year. But everybody else is gonna come up here and be sad. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being sad. If you're not sad, that means you didn't invest much. So those tears are tears of investment. Pat Eaton, Rob from the Associated Press. Kim, your players have talked about how since a calendar year ago they have become world famous for good, for bad. How has that strengthened your team, changed these young women, and what does it mean for these, the group going, that, it, that will be coming back and going forward? I've been doing this almost 40 years. That doesn't count as a player. We've changed, people. We've changed. And we've changed in so many good ways. And these young people will have a memory of being a part of something that was this great tonight. Being, many of them being a part of winning a championship last year. Um, I can't describe to you how good it is right now in women's basketball. That's why I wish this game could have been at the Final Four. Wow. Sure was good for an Elite Eight game. And um, we're proud to be a part of that. Um, good, bad, and different. Um, our world, our world has, has changed a lot when you talk about what they were just talking about, social media. I am honestly so oblivious to what those kids see, hear, and even participate in when it comes to social media. I know things when I need to know them from coaches or administrators or I need to address things, but I don't, I don't invest in any, any of that. I just, I don't. So if you want me to know something, you better send it to me. Otherwise, I don't see it unless a family member or a team member or somebody, you know, brings it to my attention. Here and then the last one in the middle. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, Azar Johnson from Envy Sports. Um, I wanted to ask you at Hanley Van Liff, it's clearly your last last game. Um, if you could just, and I'm pretty sure having the night she had, um, if you could just speak to the contribution that she brought to this team and everything that she's done, because one game doesn't define anything. I'm pretty sure if anybody can speak on Hanley and her contribution, you can. Well, I hope it's not her last game, but if it is, I'm proud to have been her coach for a year. You know, she's got another year if she wants to come back. So does Angel. Uh, I know they have to make decisions, but um, the thing that we talk about a lot on the men's side, we talk about one and dones, right? And how, you know, terrible that is. You know, you, you go through a period, you can't have, you know, these players for long periods of time. Man, they're selfish, they're going to take care of themselves. Look, everybody's different and they got to do what they have to do. Haley Van Lith 
came to LSU after being an abundant shooter, shot at a lot at, at Louisville, had great success, was on good teams. But she wanted, she graduated in three years with a finance degree. She wanted to experience all the things I guess she saw from, on a, from afar with our championship last year. And for her to take that leap of faith and leave her comfort zone at Louisville, you don't see many players do that when she was that big a piece to their puzzle. Um, she has embraced learning a new position, uh, taking less shots. Our last game against UCLA, I thought her stats were very good, but I'm an old point guard and I see all that. Um, forever indebted to Haley and her unselfish play to come to LSU to play with a lot of great players and learn a new position. Last one, go ahead. Just the growth that we've seen from Flash. Can you ID again and affiliation? Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. The growth we've seen from Flage and for Angel to sit there and say, you know, the leadership qualities that she showed this year, what does that do for your team coming back next year? Well, all three of these young ladies were um, voted captains. And for Flage to be selected as one of the captains as a sophomore um, pretty much sums it up. Uh, she is just a, a person of joy. She just plays the game with a lot of um, heart. And she's learning to become a leader at a young age. And um, I'm glad I get to coach her.